Now, I have no idea. Uh, I have no idea what you all just witnessed because I was in the middle of it, of the lecture, and the camera just goes Doink! and just falls off the off the books. So, and I quit recording because the battery got knocked off. And so I have no idea what you all just saw, but it wasn't like an earthquake. It wasn't like oh I fell and the camera stayed upright, which could be a matter of perspective. So I have no idea how the previous segment just ended, but let's just continue on like that and it will happen. So anyway, so back to our story. So you'll notice that when I move the magnet, okay, you'll notice that that induces a current. Now here's the other thing that happens. You'll notice that when I move the magnet in the direction of the coils, my voltage goes negative. If I move it out, then the voltage goes positive. So if I Oddly enough, if I alternate that back and forth, wait for it, I create alternating current, which is what we run off of. So like the solar panels, those generate DC. Current only goes in one direction because it doesn't operate by alternating a magnetic field within a coil. That's how generators work, okay? What we're doing is with the solar array, we're generating direct current. So there's no need, but to dump it out on the grid, to use it, we have to change it into alternating current. So that's what the inverters do. So here's what's important, is that when I move this thing back and forth, I'm capable of producing two directions of current depending upon what's happening. So that's going to be the one of the most important things that you have to understand, is that we can change the direction of the current depending upon what's happening. Now, if you're this end of the coil, okay, and this is what you kind of have to view yourself as. If you're this end of the coil, you're going to see dots coming this way, okay? So when I move the magnet in this direction, what's happening is that the, the loop is sensing an increase in the number of dots. So to counteract that, it's going to make X's to balance that out. That'll make more sense later on. I'm just beginning to paint this picture. So if, you, if I move the magnet in, it's sensing an increase in dots. So to counteract the dots, it makes X's. Now, when I move it in the opposite direction, it senses a decrease in dots. So it makes more dots to compensate. So I'm, I'll explain this a lot more. I'm just, this is just, I'm just planting the seed, okay? So you create a current to counteract a change. So if you're making more dots, if you're increasing the number of dots, you make X's to balance it out. If you decrease the number of dots, you make more dots to balance that out. Same thing is true. If this was making more X's when I moved it in, then the loop would make more dots to balance that out. If I removed it and, re and was reducing X's, the current would produce an X to balance that out. But here's the most important thing. If there's no change in dots, dots or X's, guess what? There's no current, okay? So keep that straight. Keep that straight. You only induce a current when you change the magnetic field. Technically, this is called flux, okay? We'll get more into that later. Flux is a change in this magnetic field, okay? We'll talk more about that later. Okay, so you got that idea. All right, so we move this, we make electricity, and the bulb lights up, okay? All right, got that idea. Life's good, okay, all right. So, let's make, take a few notes here. So, You induce a current if 
and only if. We change the magnetic field. Okay? So listen to me, listen to me, listen to me. I cannot emphasize this enough. You only induce a current if you change the magnetic field. If you don't change the magnetic field, you don't induce a current. Okay, so let's look at some math. So let's say that uh, we've got a conductor in a magnetic field, okay? And the magnetic field is going into the page, okay? And we're going to uh, have a current going this way, okay? And this is, and, and we're back to the traditional idea of a current. So if you look at this, then the force from the magnetic field is going to equal Q V B. So if you want to get a direction of which that's going to go, the charge particle is going up. The magnetic field is going in, so the force is going to be going to the left if you quick refresh on the right hand rule. So we're going to set this equal to the charge, the velocity, and then the magnetic field. Now, so what we're going to look at is that we're going to set the electric field that's created equal to the magnetic field. Okay, so we're going to set these two things equal. The force from the electric field is going to equal the force from the magnetic field, okay? Because that's what's making this whole thing happen, is that this magnetic field here is creating an electric field within that conductor, and we're just going to set those two things equal. So this is going to be QE, okay? The old feck thing, okay? Well, here, yeah, let's write it that way. We'll go... Uh, Eck. Okay. And that's going to equal QVB. So what's going to happen on this one is because of the fact that uh, we're going to set these two things equal, we're going to drop out the Qs so we don't have to worry about the charge. And so what we have here is E equals VB. Okay. Now, you also remember that the strength of the electric field is your change in voltage over D. Now, so this is this VED thing, okay? So this is old school, this is just old school electric field equations, okay? That's all it is. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna change it up a little bit. Instead of D, we're gonna set that as the length of whatever is in that magnetic field. So then, I'm gonna multiply I'm going to put this as L. I'm going to move this over here. Now, and that voltage, that delta V, is going to equal the magnetic field times the length times the velocity. So this is your voltage. Okay? So, all we did is we said, okay, here's what's going to be important is that, and, 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 and don't get these confused. So the force is QVB, right? So that's your charge times your velocity times your magnetic field. Your voltage is going to be the strength of the magnetic field times the length of what's ever moving times the velocity. So you have to be careful here because you have two Vs. One is a voltage and one is a velocity. So that's why, hold on, you give me something. Because they handle this a little bit differently. Yeah. So on your equation sheet, okay, on this blue down, on the purple one down here at the bottom, instead of using voltage, so that that way you don't have voltage and velocity in the same equation, they use this fancy E, which actually stands for electromotive force. So what's actually on your equation sheet is this fancy cursive E equaling BLV. So when you see E, okay, all that is is the electromotive force, which is joules. 
per volt, or excuse me, joules per coulomb. So when you see delta V, when you see this E, that just means the same thing as your voltage. So here's what's going to be important again. If you don't have a magnetic field, guess what? You don't have an electromotive force. You don't have a voltage. If you don't have a length of wire, obviously, you don't have a wire, you don't have it. And if you're not moving, you don't have an electromotive force either. So you have to have a magnetic field, a length of wire that's moving in it, and a voltage. Okay? Don't run a velocity to create that voltage. So you all have it as on your equation sheet is E equals BLV, okay, which is this bottom right equation right here. Okay, that's the one that you guys have. Okay. Now, so how this plays out. So I'll do a little doodling here. So let's say that you have plane. Okay. Like so. All right. And it's flying in this direction at 260 meters per second. And it has a wingspan of 65 meters. And we're flying through the magnetic field of the Earth, which is 5.0 times 10 to the negative fifth Tesla. So what I want to figure out is how much voltage is going to build up across those wings as this plane is flying through the magnetic field of the Earth. Okay? So you're just going to go voltage, which is the same thing as that electromotive force, which is going to be VLV, which is going to be 5 times 10 to the negative fifth, times your length, which is 65 meters times 260 meters per second, and you get 0.85 volts, okay? So that's not very much, okay? 0.85 volts, if, you know, trust me that you wouldn't even feel that. But what can happen though, and this is gonna be important, and this is why planes can build up static charge, because of the fact that as they're flying through the magnetic field of the earth, or, you know, lightning stone, whatever, you can create a voltage across those wings. So. That's what's going to be important here. Okay, now I'm going to step back, I'm going to change the camera, and I'm going to zoom in on this little thing right here. This would be so much easier if you go over here. Okay. So, what this is, <coughs> is a, uh, just an aluminum rod, okay, that's all it is, and this is two tracks with a magnet in between, and then I've got this hooked up to my power source, okay, on the DC side. So, I'm going to put this on here, okay. And I'm going to turn it on. But right now, there's no, there's no current flowing through. There's no potential. So what I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to turn this thing up. And when I do that, I can make... Now, I've turned it back off. So when I turn this up and create this current... Hold on. then I can make that thing move. So, oh, I'm not touching it, okay? So what's happening is this. When I turn it up, I'm changing the magnetic field that's created by the current that's on the rails. So what happens is that Mother Nature flips out and goes, oh, okay, well, I'm going to induce a current across here 
to oppose the changes in the magnetic field that's happening here. So when I turn this up, okay, I can make that, I'm not touching it, okay, all I'm doing is that I'm increasing the current. And I'm doing that, and hopefully you can see that, you actually get some nice little sparks going across there. Actually, let me turn up the lights. That'd be cool. So we'll see if we can get some spark action going. So here we go, kids. Ooh, there we go. That was a nice one. Do that again. Okay. So what's happening is that there's a potential difference. Oh, come on. There's a potential difference across the rails. Okay. And it's changing the magnetic field that's in between. So the aluminum rolls and there's obviously a force exerted on it because of the fact that you are changing that magnetic field. So let me go turn the lights back on. So now we need to start to do a little bit of math and explain what happened. So, first off, we got to use the right hand rule again on steroids. Hold on, I gotta change the camera. Hold on, I apologize. I'm sure that was just horrible to watch. Okay. But, okay. So, imagine that you have a loop. Okay. So here's just like a U shaped piece of wire. Okay. So imagine that you've got like a U shaped piece of wire, something like this. Okay. And within this, there's a magnetic field, okay? And the magnetic field is going into that area around inside the loop. Now, across that, you also have, hold on, I've lost my little, ah, oh, there it is, okay? Now, across that, you have a piece of conducting wire like so, hold on, I left that on. So you have a piece of conducting wire that can roll like this. So you've got this. Now, we're gonna pull this thing, and this is gonna be important. We're gonna pull this thing to the right, okay? We're gonna pull this thing in this direction. Now, <laughs> Here's where the right hand rule kind of becomes on steroids. So here's the first thing that you have to understand is that, and this magnetic field extends out into here. So when we pull this thing in this direction, you imagine this is kind of like a window. I'm pulling it in this direction and I'm exposing more X's, okay? So mother nature, at this point kind of flips out and says, oh, well, if you have, if you're going to make more X's in there, then I'm going to counteract that by making more O's or, or, or dots, okay? So since this is going in this direction, it's like a window, we're exposing more X's. So Mother Nature goes, oh, okay, if you're going to make more X's, that's fine. I'm going to counteract your move, so it's kind of like chess. I'm going to counter your move by making more O's. So within this area, 
And then you change up the color here. I need to make more O's. So now you've got to use the right hand rule, okay? And say, okay, hey, I need to make more O's coming out of this page. So what that, what's going to happen is that this is going to induce a current in here. So this wire is going to have a current, and the current is going to be going up so that that way I can curl my hand in this direction to make more dots. Okay? So the current's going this way to make more dots to compensate for exposing more X's. So at this point, I'm going to induce a current that's going to be going around in the counterclockwise direction like this. Okay, so that's the first time we're going to use the right hand rule. We're going like this, we're exposing X's, we need to make dots to compensate for it. So if that's going in this direction, now we're going to use the right hand rule a second time. Now we're going to use the force right hand rule. So because this current is going in this direction, because the external magnetic field the external magnetic field, the X's, are going into the page, then the force is acting to the left. So the force created by that magnetic field is going to be pointing in this direction. So what's happening is that I'm pulling, I'm trying to pull this thing in this direction, but there is an opposing force created by the magnetic field that's trying to pull it in the opposite direction, okay? So this is what you can use like, in effect, like a braking effect. So if this is going in this direction, if I'm pulling it this way, this force is going to be going in the opposite direction. Now, if I push it in this direction, and I'm decreasing the number of x's, then Mother Nature goes, oh, if you want to decrease x's, then I need to make more X's. So then if I'm pushing it in that direction and I'm decreasing the number of X's, I'm going to make more X's so the current would be going in the opposite direction. Now, let's play the what-if game. If this thing is just sitting here and there's no movement at all, then there's no change in the number of X's and there would be no forces involved. So you're only going to have a force when you have something moving, when you're changing that magnetic field. Now, what I did with this, I did, wasn't actually moving it, but what I was doing by turning up the power is that I was changing the strength of the magnetic field inside of here. And that's what caused that thing to move. Because as I changed the magnetic field, then it either made more X's or dots, depending on what you're doing, which created a force which made that thing roll. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. So we've got a little bit, we've got to get a little bit creative with some math here. So the force from the pole, from the pole, not the bowl, just think of the magnetic field, has to equal the force from the magnet, okay, and that's going to come from that right hand rule. So we got to do a little bit of work here off to the side. So we're going to start with the idea that ver, okay, because we're going to have a certain voltage, we're going to have a, a certain current, we're going to have a certain resistance. So if we solve this for current, we get V over R, and what you're, in terms of a magnetic field, we're going to change that to that fancy E over R. Okay, so that voltage is the same thing as that big fancy E. So what we're going to do then is if we go back up here and we said voltage is BLV, not to be confused with BLT, which I actually I like bacon and tomato, bacon and lettuce sandwiches, just no tomatoes, but that's a whole other thing. So we're going to write this as BLV over R. Okay, there we go. Now, the force of the pole, I'm wondering that around, I'm going to tell you that right, is going to be ILB. And then we're going to take this whole thing here and put that in for that current. So then we're going to have BLV 
over R times LB. So then we get V L squared B squared over R is going to equal the force from skip that up again. The pole. So what this is going to tell us is like in that situation when I had this thing going across, if I wanted to exert a force to balance out that magnetic force, I would have to know how fast it's going, the cross-sectional length that's in the magnetic field, the strength of the magnetic field, and the resistance of the wire. So, clearly, as, as the magnetic field gets stronger, and that's squared, that's going to require more force to pull it. If the length gets bigger, okay, that makes sense. That's going to take more force. If I pull it faster, that's going to take more force. And as my resistance actually becomes bigger, that actually decreases the amount of force. Okay, so we have that equation. Now, the other thing that you can look at, remember, is that when you look at power, and this will, this will play out on some, on some of the problems. Remember, as power is work divided by time, and work is force times distance over time, and so you can write that as power is force times velocity. So if you look at a power aspect of this, then if you know how much force it takes to pull something, okay? Oh, I screwed that up. If you, if you know how much force it takes to pull something, and then you know that velocity, how fast you're pulling it, then you can figure out that power calculation as well. So this is going to be a handy dandy thing to keep in mind. Okay. So, I want to give you this assignment, and uh, I actually want you to do this assignment, so I'll, I'll send out that. It's not very long. Uh, only took me like, that, that's all it takes. It's not very long at all. But let me kind of get you through what's going to happen on question number three. Question number three is going to talk to you about what's going to happen when you, on, on a direct current. So let me, let me kind of get you through 3A right from the beginning. So this is question 3A. So when you look at question 3A, you've got a wire loop like this, and you've got a bar across it, and you have a magnetic field that's going like this, okay? And you're pulling this thing in this direction, okay? So what you've got to figure out is what's the direction of the current that's going to happen. Now, you're pulling it in this direction. You are increasing the number of X's, okay? So Mother Nature goes, ooh, you got X's? Then I need to make dots. So what that means is that when you look at what's going to happen then on 3A, you're making X's which are going in. So, oh, I'm sorry, I screwed that up. My, I drew that completely wrong. Let me back, I, hold on, let me back up. I drew that completely wrong. I just glanced at that and I don't have my glasses. You actually have dots, okay? That's what I get from not looking with my glasses. <laughs> and then I looked at that and I was like, oh my God, those are, yeah, this is completely different. So on 3A, these are dots, not X's. Forget what I just said. These are dots. So you're pulling these and you're exposing dots. So Mother Nature goes, oh, we need to make X's. So as this thing is being pulled, and you are exposing, it's like, a, like it's a window, you are showing more and more dots. So Mother Nature goes, oh, we need to make X's. So the only way you can make X's in here is if your fingers are going to go into the page. So the current's going to go in this direction, it's going to come around like this, and that's going to allow you to make X's. So this is going to be coming around like this because you're making more 
x's. Now, if you reverse this and you push this wire in this direction and you're decreasing the number of dots, then Mother Nature would go, oh, we need more dots. If you're shrinking the number of dots, then your hand would go in this direction and the current would be going in the opposite direction. Now, if this thing isn't moving, there's no current. If there's no magnetic field, nothing's not going to be a current. So in other words, if I just pull this wire and there's no external magnetic field, there's nothing to worry about. So I will send out that excitement. It's relatively uh, short. Uh, when you get to uh, question number three, or problem number three, problem number three, Remember that power is force times velocity. Okay, so just saying, keep that in mind. Uh, and your answer to problem number four, this is kind of the preemptive thing. Your answer to 4A should be around one amp, and your answer to 4B should be around 0.3 newtons. So when you get to problem number four, your first answer should be around 1 amp. Your second answer should be around 0.3 newtons when you get to that. So, okay, I will get that sent out. There we go, kids.